What is up guys? In this video, I want to show you how to color grade your DJI Avada 2 footage and take it from looking like this to looking like this. Now, before we get to color grading, we need to make sure that the footage is shot right with the right settings. And one of the most important settings for making your footage look its best and being able to color grade it is to shoot in the D-Log M color profile instead of in normal color. And that will just give you a lot more dynamic range and a lot more flexibility for color grading. And then once we have our footage shot, we're just going to come and bring it here into DaVinci Resolve. I'm using DaVinci Resolve because it has some more advanced color grading tools that will let us do some stuff to the footage that we wouldn't be able to do in Premiere Pro or Final Cut. But the basic idea will apply in any software, even if some of the more advanced tricks don't. So first of all, you'll just trim your footage, get the part of the clip that you want, say your in and out points, drag that onto the timeline. And then once you've got your footage on the timeline, you'll just put your playhead over it and then come down here to the bottom and we'll switch over into the color page. The icon is a dot with some other dots around it. And there's a lot going on here on the color page. I actually have a full course showing how to use all the tools in DaVinci Resolve to color grade your drone shots. But for right now, basically what we need to know is that here is the viewer where you'll see your footage. Over here is where we have our nodes. And a lot of people get really scared when they see nodes because it's something they're not used to. An easy way to think of them is like adjustment layers. Each node is like a layer where you can add different adjustments to the footage and add masks to that layer so that it only affects a certain part of the shot. And then you can add multiple of those layers or in Resolve they're called nodes to be able to add multiple different adjustments one after the other. And then down here we can just switch between our different clips. And then over here all the way on the right we have our scopes that show the brightness and colors of our image, but that's for a little bit more advanced stuff. We don't absolutely need them for what we're doing in this tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is just scrub through our footage and find the clip that we want to grade off of. We just want to find one frame that kind of represents the whole clip. In this clip, I was just ripping around shooting gaps under these pear trees. So I'm going to take the frame from just before I go under the tree. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a lot to the footage to do a lot of the heavy lifting of color grading the log profile. I'm just going to use one of my custom LUTs here. You can actually download this LUT for free. Link is in the description of this video. And we'll just come over here to our LUT browser, grab that LUT and drag it over here onto our first node. And as you can see, if we turn on and off our color grades, that's already made a huge difference, taking it from just looking pretty flat and boring to looking a lot more nice and punchy and cinematic. But as you can see, we're kind of clipping some of the whites, losing some detail up here in these clouds. You can also see that here on our waveform that it is touching the top and losing some of that data. And we don't want that. So what we can do is we can just come down here and grab our highlights over here in our color wheels panel and pull those down. I'll go down to about, let's say, negative 40 something. And then I'll also grab the shadows right next to it, click on them and drag them up to let's say around 20 something. That looks pretty good. Now, as you can see, that already looks pretty good. That could definitely pass as a nice looking drone shot. But I want to add a little bit more pop and life to this shot and take it from looking good to looking really great. So to do that, what I'm going to do is come up here to our node up here in the node graph and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go down here to add node and I'm going to click on add serial node before. A serial node is just basically a regular correction node and that's going to add one before this node that we already added. So that way the adjustments that we apply to the node that we just added will be done before the adjustments on the first node that we added. So on this node, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here into the qualifier panel. It has this little eyedropper icon, click on that. And then you'll want to come down here to the luminescent slider, grab the bottom of it, and we're going to click Shift H on our keyboard to turn on mask highlighting so we can see what we're selecting. Basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag up the bottom of this luminescence key slider until we have only selected the highlights of our image. We're trying to make a selection just here of the sky and it's fine if we also select some highlights here on the ground, that is just fine as well. So we're just gonna adjust it there until all of the sky is selected. And then we're gonna go down here to where it says L soft. We're gonna click on that and drag it up about to roughly 10 or 15. And basically what this does is instead of making it so that it goes straight from being deselected to being selected at a certain point of brightness, it kind of ramps it up from being less selected where it's darker to being more selected where it's brighter. And then the last thing we need to do to get a good luminescence mask is to click over here on denoise and turn this all the way up to 100%. And that will just sort of soften out the key and make it not so harsh and not create weird artifacts. 
So then we'll just hit Shift H again to turn off our mask highlight. And then we'll come back over here to our curves panel. And we're just gonna add a point right here in the middle of the curve. We're basically just darkening all the areas that we've selected in the image. You can just play around with where this curve is. For this shot, I'm going to put the curve a little bit further up here toward the highlights because I want to bring out some more detail in those clouds. And we'll also add another point down here close to the shadows to give this just a little bit more contrast. And I'm also gonna come and turn my highlights down just a little bit more for this area to bring out just a little bit more detail in those clouds. So now we've created this luminescence mask that just affects the highlights and darken those highlights. Now I'm going to create a mask that selects the opposite of what we just selected. So instead of just selecting the highlights, we're just going to select the darker areas of the image, brighten them up and add a little bit of contrast to them. And so to do that, I'm gonna again, just right click on this node that has our highlight mask on it. And I'm going to come down here again to add node. This time, instead of clicking on add serial or add serial before, I'm just going to click on add outside. And what this will do is it will create another node right after that one that has selected the opposite of whatever was selected on the mask on the first node. So now if we go and click on that node, you can see that there's no adjustments on that. And if we click Shift H to turn on our mask highlights, you can see that everything except for the sky and the highlights is selected. So now we want to brighten up these darker areas of the image. So I'm gonna to come to my curve here and I'm going to add a point fairly close to the highlights and brighten those up. We just want to add some contrast by doing that. We're gonna put one up here fairly close to the top, fairly close to the highlights, and then one a little bit more in the midtones here. And then I'm actually gonna come down to the shadow areas down here toward the bottom of the graph, and we're gonna darken those a little bit to bring back a little bit of the punchiness. We'll just go ahead and tweak these points a little bit to see what will give us the best results. And then I'm gonna come over here and bump up my shadows just a little bit as well. And so there we go. Now, if we play this back, you can see that we have a much more punchy and contrasty and pretty looking shot. If we come over here and we turn off these two highlight and shadow mask nodes, you can see that it has taken it from a pretty good shot to a much more vibrant and dynamic and engaging shot that really pulls you in instead of just sort of an average drone shot. Now, if this looks a little bit too saturated to you, you can just come over here to our node with the LUT and just pull down the saturation a little bit and we'll still get the same effect, but with just a little bit lower saturation. Or you could add further nodes after this, maybe with some extra LUTs to give it an even more stylized look like this more cinematic teal and orange look, whatever you want to do after that point. But that should give you a really nice good starting grade. So hopefully that will get you started with color grading your Avada 2 footage. As I mentioned, you can get the LUT that I used in this video completely free. The link to that is down in the description, so make sure to go and download that. And as I also mentioned earlier, I have an entire drone color grading course where I show you all the ins and outs of how to color grade your footage, whether that's from a regular camera drone or from an FPV drone, to get the most amazing cinematic results and the best colors. And you can get that course on its own. I'll also link it in the description, and it's also part of my entire 10-hour drone filmmaking course, Flying Filmmaker, which you can find out more about at flyingfilmmakerpro.com. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, subscribe, to the channel for a lot more tips just like this and I'll see you in the next video.